Good morning, everyone. Michelle Arnott here at Diamond Rock Glass Studio. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is part two of a two-part video, how to work with bevels and create your own pattern. So in the first part, I walked you through how I put together five different bevels, and I actually finished the first one. So I walked you through how I drew out the pattern, and the first thing I'd like to do in this video is show you how it looks finished and in the window with the sunshine actually coming through it. So I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm really excited to work on these next four bevels. Um, and on this video, I wanna focus a little bit more on the borders and the framing of each piece. There's lots of different options, so I'm gonna do them each a little bit different and show you how I'm doing that. I'm also gonna walk you through how I draw out the pattern, um, but I'm gonna focus a little more on the bordering and the framing of each piece. And all the glass that I'm using and the bevels that I'm using, I will list below in the description box. So let's get busy and work on our next bevel. So here's the first bevel that I am drawing out the pattern for. This one, I put the squares around it, I traced the bevel, and now I start to draw my pattern. I started with some curvy lines and then I decided maybe I want straight lines. So as you can see, I just kind of work with it as I go. And now I'm working on the border. I put a two inch square bevel in the corners. One inch of that is inside the inside rectangle and then the other inch is on the outside. So as you can see, the bevel is actually jetting out one inch into the border. And now I'm using carbon paper to trace a second pattern. And then I'm gonna number each piece. So here are the border pieces cut out. As you can see, the inside bevel is sticking out into that border piece about one inch, and then there's one inch outside of that. So I'm gonna move on to the next bevel. All right, so I have my bevel placed out with the squares around it. I have about four and a half inches here, about four and a half inches here. I've got one and a half inches there, and about one and a half inches there. My piece right now, the inside part is going to run about 22 inches by almost 14 inches. So let's start tracing. Again, I put the squares around, I traced the bevel, and now I'm using one inch square bevels to border the entire piece. So I'm gonna start drawing my pattern. Um, I'm just going to start with some basic drawing and work on it as as I go. Okay, so again, I started with curved lines here and here, and then I decided on some straight lines. Remember how I said earlier that I often use curvy lines more than straight lines? Um, and then with the last pattern, I ended up going with straight lines because the bevel had straight lines and curved lines. So I'm just deciding that even though this bevel has mostly curved lines, I'm gonna mix it with straight lines. And again, I'm gonna follow my own rule that says there's really no rules as long as you like how it looks overall at the end. Um, that's all that matters. We're not building a house, we're making artwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure to make sure these are pretty accurate. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna worry about them being perfectly perfect, but I want it to look nice. So I'm gonna do that part next, and then I'm going to trace a second pattern with carbon paper and then number it, cut out the pattern pieces and get to cutting. So it's been a couple of hours. I finished cutting out the pieces, uh, the pattern pieces and then the glass, and I just have it sitting here rough cut with the bevels placed around it alongside of this one that's also rough cut. And so I have to do the grinding on both of these and then the soldering, of course. But before I do that, I'm gonna continue on with the next two pieces, uh, drawing the pattern and then rough cutting them as well. Here's a piece of Euroboros that I'm gonna be using for the next piece for my next bevel. And I'd also like to show off my cute little dog. He comes to work with me every day. This is Peppy. 
He spends about 90% of his time wrapped up in a blanket. He's sitting in his sunspot. He's got about five beds here at the studio. So remember this bubble, I made this pattern much more curvy and it's, um, this one's got a few more pieces than the last one. There's a total of 16 pieces in this one. Um, it's not too terribly large. Um, I think I wanna frame this one with a wood frame, but I never really decide until I'm completely done. But like I said, I'm gonna end up framing these all differently. And so I can show you some different options on how to frame your piece. So here is the blue piece. All the pieces are cut and grinded. I just wanted to show you that I did put the squares back around it to show you that I do that first before I put the bevels. I wanna make sure that the inside part is as square and the angles are as good as they can be. And then I'll go ahead and add the bevels around it. So here's a piece with all the bevels put around it and I put the square back around it. All the pieces are fitting up pretty good and what I'm looking at is to make sure again that all of these are meeting up to the square um, and if there's any gaps again at this time I want it to be within but where I do want it to meet up really well is right along the square. So right now I'm doing that really well. I'm going to go ahead and foil these blue pieces and then I'll solder everything. I'm going to attempt to show you how to frame this piece with zinc. So what I have, they sell zinc in six foot pieces. What I keep in the store here, they have different widths. What I keep here is 5 30 seconds, 9 30 seconds, 3 8 and 1 half. This one here is 3 8 inch. Um, and it's probably what I use the most of, um, the 3 8 and the 9 30 seconds. The 5 30 seconds is real, real narrow, so it's good for sm much smaller pieces. So, um, what I have here is a bench top cutoff saw, saw. I got this one from Harbor Freight. I think I got it on sale. It was about $30 and it works great for all, um, all of the zinc framing, even the one half inch, which is the largest that I carry here. The first thing I need to do is make sure that my angle is correct. So here's the opening here. I want to make a cut on my zinc like this with the opening on this side. So I have my sock uh, set at 90 degree angle and I'm just going to go ahead and cut that. So now I can fit this on the top part here and I'm gonna make a mark just about like that. I'm going to make a mark here where I need to cut this. And when I take this off, I'm actually going to need to cut it on the other side. So what I do is make a mark on the opposite side. Because this angle is like this here and I want this angle to go out here. So I'm going to have to flip this around and make the next angle. And since I'm already at the saw, I'm gonna make, uh, this is an incorrect angle to start the next uh, side of the frame. So I'm just gonna flip it and make the angle correct. So now let's see how this top piece fits. Um, that might be just a little bit long, so I'm just going to shave off just a little tiny bit of it. So I think this is going to look good. So right now I have an option of doing all four sides, or I can go ahead and um, flux and tack this down so it doesn't shift or move on me. Um, 
I honestly sometimes do that. Sometimes I just keep cutting all the sides, but let's go ahead and tack this one piece into place. I make really sure that um, these bevels are actually kind of handy to work with because um, where this bevel angles, that's right where I want that the angle of my zinc to match up to it. So let's go ahead and drop some solder on this. And then I will do my other three sides. If you ever need to open this channel up a little bit more, there is another use for this tool here, this lathe can or FID. Um, this end of it, you can open up this channel a little bit. So that's a use for the other side of this FID. Makes it easier to slide it in there. Um, and I need to shave off just a little bit. Okay, let's see. I'm thinking this is going to look good. So let me tack this one in place. There we go. So now I'm going to join this zinc wherever I have a seam, which is here, here, here. And I have seen where some people like to put some solder in the very corners where the two zinc pieces meet. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. I think today I will. Um, sometimes I feel like it gives me a little bit more of a finished look, um, but that's really up to you. If you're met up perfectly and there's nothing, I mean, it looks really good. It, it doesn't necessarily need it, but um, so that's up to you. Okay, so now I am going to turn it over and do the same thing to the back. I just finished grinding all of the brown pieces and I just want to reiterate how important it is to make sure you put these squares around your piece. Make sure that the edges are lining up to the square, especially if this is the part that you're framing. You're not adding any more bevels. You're not adding any more glass to the outside. If you're putting a frame directly on this piece, which I plan on doing a wood frame, I want to make sure that these edges are straight and again if there's any gaps I want it to be within but not on the outside edge of this piece. So I think I'm looking good. I'm going to get on to the foiling. Okay so that brown piece I am going to frame it with a wood frame like this. This is oak. I get this in about nine foot pieces and you can see it's got a channel here. Um, this is made specifically for stained glass. I will have this on my website. I think I'm going to sell this in two and three foot lengths and it's going to be right around five dollars a foot. Anyways, um, this has a channel here just like the zinc does um, and this is used just like the zinc uh, or it's used for framing just like the zinc. So just like I made the 45 degree angle on the zinc, you do the same thing with the wood frame. Of course, you're going to use a miter saw. If you don't have a miter saw, you can use um, a miter box or anything that's going to help you achieve this 45 degree angle. And any kind of saw um, can get the job done. So I'm going to frame the brown piece with this. And then um, I'm going to attempt to wrap up this video. I actually had many, many, um, lots of time uh, spent into filming this, but I deleted a whole lot of it because it, it was a lot of repetition. 
But at the end of this video, I hope what you have been able to gather is how easy it really is to work with bevels. Um, and it is a lot of fun and they're pretty quick to work with. But the, I did the same thing with each of them. I put the bevel together. I put it down on a big piece of paper. I traced that bevel. I put the squares around it and I started drawing. And I didn't have any plan when I started. Um, you just got to start. So, And if you don't like what you have, you can always change it, which you saw that I did. Um, and then you can play with the borders, which I'm going to go through next, the different ways that I bordered each piece and how I framed each piece. And I'm just going over a few options. There is unlimited options of how you can finish your piece. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, my next few videos, I am going to keep to simpler, smaller projects, and they will be kits that will be available on my website. Again, www.diamondrockglassstudio.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.